Have you ever wondered how Chris Jones makes hyper-realistic people with such awesome wrinkles that even L'Oreal can't remove those, you know? Well, the secret lies in wrinkle maps that you can use on pretty much everything that crumbles. But none of this would work without the secret component that dynamically adds or removes wrinkles. And these are stretch and squeeze maps. And today I'm gonna show you a technique that will up your 3D game seriously. Here I have a tube and if I move this I get wrinkles or if I rotate this, basically this is really physically accurate accurate, however we pronounce that. As we get blue in the areas we compress and red in the areas where we stretch, right? And this is fully procedural, it is made all with geometry nodes, so let's get started, right? So first of course we need a little tube, how do we create a little tube? We add a little curve first and we put this down here and we add geometry nodes on this side here. We need just to add a little curve circle, so uh, we add a curve to mesh and basically this is the first step done. It looks like that pretty horrible to be honest. To make this better first, let's also, let's of course rotate this uh, handle here to create like 45 of an angle and this looks like a cylinder of course. And we also decrease the radius to something more reasonable like for example, um, let's do 20 centimeters as you know, that's my age. So in case of a face, you have displacement maps for faces. So this is already like pre-made. You usually don't find any like wrinkle maps specifically for pipes. So we have to recreate this our own. So to create our own map, we need a set position node to set the position of the points of the pipe accordingly. And um, let's say a noise texture. So we take a noise texture, plug this into the offset. This is like the most lazy as um, <laughs> displacement map you can do, but this doesn't work too well. Well, the reason is that actually we should displace um, outwards in the dire direction of normals. So normals, if you don't know, are basically things that point outwards from a surface like that. So it tells us in which direction the surface is looking at. For example, if you fill the caps, we also have some normals in the edges here. We take a normal node, right? And it put this into the set positions um, offset, right? Basically, this becomes very, very large. And that's because we just displace everything by the amount it's already facing towards, right? But we have to control this. So I'm going to add a mix RGB node. I'm going to also disable the auto offset so we don't have any unfortunate sliding going on. And now we do so that we can mix between the normal, right? normal displacement and nothing so black right so this is the original uh, tube and if we put the factor up we get uh, one so it displaces fully now for this factor here i want this factor to be not uniform uh, alongside this tube i want this to be more like um more something like that so for example i could use this noise factor here I actually would like this to be more like squeezed together, more like ribbons. And you tell me, okay, I can increase the scale of this thing. Well, I can, but this doesn't still look correct. For example, in the wireframe mode, you see we have so little faces here that we have no possibility at all to get something decent out of here. So we need to set the resolution of the spline to be a uh, spline means a curve. Uh, we need to basically make this just more high res, right? So we can add like resolution here. Let's add like Let's add 300. So we have 300 in this direction and also 32 uh, along this curve. I think we should add maybe 64 just for a good measure. And uh, now you see the noise is really too tight here, too tight here. Well, we can decrease the scale, right? We can do something like that. But the problem with this noise is that if I move this now, you see it is like it's not at all attached to the tube and that's because this noise isn't attached to the tube i mean it's pretty clear because we are just currently using the world uh, position as the coordinates for the noise texture so it makes sense that this doesn't know anything about what this tube is and where it is so let's use some information about the tube that we have for example the index of the tube so the index is just a number for each point as you see we got we got like a lot of those points here basically every tip here every vertex gets one number and that's why we have like a massive amount of those like currently uh, as you see down here 19,000 so this means that we got like a really dense noise going on here so I do so that I'm gonna map this like that with a map range and I'm gonna map this uh, so from the maximum with what is the maximum it's currently something like 19,000 I think something like that 
but this is not the exact maximum that we have. I'm actually gonna use uh, an attribute statistic node to get the correct maximum uh, from the mesh that we want to get this maximum from. So this is the curve to mesh here, like that. So the index goes to the attribute, and now we got the maximum thing here that we can plug into the from maximum. And now this is correct, and however I change the resolution or things here, the noise is gonna look exactly the same, um, but before when this was like 19,000, this would have moved around like that. So this is how we can fix uh, small issues like um, that. If you want to have a look at the nodes, then they look like that. And now let's go on. So uh, what I want to do is actually do uh, add some more scale to this noise, like maybe that. And now if I move this mesh around, this noise gets mapped to this and it looks pretty nice, pretty wrinkly. Um, but I don't want this to be like as strong, so what I can do is I can just use a math node and I can multiply this to create like a smaller noise. And I also don't want this noise to be like so aggressively pointed outwards, so I'm gonna create a subtraction node and I'm gonna subtract 0.5 from it. Uh, so I have like some occasional ribbons here, not like everywhere as I had before. And I'm gonna add some more scale. So now I just have to make sure that I only have these wrinkles where I actually need those wrinkles. But before that, let's make a little sponsor break. So this video is sponsored by L'Oréal Paris. Actually, no, it's actually not. It's sponsored by Skillshare. So if you want to get started with Geometry Nodes like from the beginning, I actually have a class on Skillshare, an amazing class. And it's on Skillshare, which is an amazing platform on its own. This class will teach you the fundamentals behind Geometry Nodes. And once you're finished, there is a whole world of classes on Skillshare waiting for you about graphic design, character design, concept art. I use it to learn creative things I'd like to know more about, such as YouTube storytelling by Thomas Daher, and sometimes completely new things as well. I'm pretty sure this is the best learning platform for all sorts of creative people. And you can access all of this for free because the first 1000 people to use my code or link in the description will get the one month free trial of Skillshare. So go check it out. And now let's go on with this magical system, how we create those wrinkles. So the system is based on face area. So as you see, we have a lot of tiny faces here. And if I move this thing together, I think you agree with me that those faces will get smaller, right? So for example, if I rotate that, we have smaller faces here and we have larger faces up here. So the question is now, how do you get the area of those faces and map this to a mask? Well, we can do this using uh, nothing else than the face area node, of course. So we take the face area and how can we view this face area? Because, I mean, I don't see anything here and you don't probably also. So you're going to track this face area as the group output here, right? Now press N and open this side panel here and under, the, under group, sorry, you have this area. This is a float attribute that's getting output. And we go to this modifier tab here and select output attributes and type here area. And this attribute is called area. I'm gonna open a new uh, shader editor window and select the material here. And I'm gonna also add this material to our uh, object also. So set material and I'm gonna name this material preview, uh, add the preview material. And now if I go to the material preview, I don't see anything. Well, the, the reason is that I just I mean, I just have a white material here. I should actually have an attribute node here. An attribute node, and I'm gonna use this as Control shift click preview. We don't still see anything except the missing attribute, but our attribute is called area, right? This is pretty black because the areas of the faces are really small. So if I, for example, now just scale this like crazily, like scale is like 1000 times, you see this gets more white because the face area gets larger, right? So I would like this face area to be between zero and one, but currently this is very, very small. So how can I do this? Well, first I can just multiply this a little bit um, by like 100. I'm gonna turn off the set position right now because you see we have those uh, stripes here. I'm gonna turn this off. So all the faces have the same size. And I'm gonna open this spreadsheet editor up here. And I'm gonna just press Control Shift click on this multiply node here and evaluate this at the last geometry output. And now we have this viewer that says, okay, the face area is like 0 0.028, smallest one being 0 0.022 and the largest one is 0 0.029. Zero three nine. We can keep this in mind and use a map range to map between those values, right? I'm gonna 
a map between the smallest one, which was 0 0.022, right? It was 0 0.022, and the largest one was 0 0.039. Now, for you, these values will be different. Of course, this is not like ground truth values here. They are different for you. And now you see those black things here, which means it's squeezed here and stretched out in this white area. And now I want to map this to um, blue being the squeezed area and red being the stretched area. So I can just use a color ramp for that actually. I'm gonna use a color ramp. Uh, I'm gonna disable the viewer right now and make sure that the dark areas are just blue and the white areas are uh, red and the area in the middle will be black, which means nothing. And now you see we have this weird thing here. Well, this is logical because we get colors out of here, but we output this as a float, as a gray dot. So this actually should be a color attribute. And now you see we have this. But the problem is, I mean, I haven't done anything with this object. How on earth do I have uh, like squeezing uh, in this area and stretching in this area, this doesn't seem right. Well, this is just the way it is because the objects are never perfect. If you're using faces, for example, you cannot create a perfect thing like that. You have already some stretchings and stuff there because not all the faces have the same size. So what we actually are gonna do is that we are gonna create two versions of this mesh. Duplicate this, move it up like that. And I'm gonna call this the base state. This acts like a little memory card, basically. And this is the new state, basically. The new state outputs an attribute called new area. And now it has disappeared because when we go under the shaders, of course, the name here is wrong. Let's call this new area. And now we should have this back, right? And under base state, let's also go to geometry node editor and let's duplicate the geometry node system. And let's call this base state and let's call this also the new state and now what we are going to do is that we are going uh, to the new state object make sure it is selected and drag the base state into this uh, node tree so we have the new state objects and the base state is dragged into this uh, node tree so for example uh, if you use this as the output we get the exact same thing actually because they are copies of each other. The base state object uh, here has the exact same nodes. It has the same color gradient output. So I want to get the color gradient output of the base state uh, also on the new state object. So to do that, I'm gonna use a transfer attribute. So I'm gonna transfer the attribute from the base state as the geometry. It is a color attribute because it has blue and red channels. Um, based on, it can be basically anything, index is the fastest probably. Um, now I'm going to drag in uh, the area attribute here, which is actually the base area attribute, like that. So from the base object, I output base area, and from the new object, I output new area. Now I want to get both of these attributes into the tree of the new state object. So for that, um, I need basically just a group input node here, and I'm gonna drag from here to this attribute. And now I can just, you know, I have, I have this like option here to choose a color, but the color I want is called uh, the base area, like that. Now if I uh, switch between those two outputs, they should be the same and they are the same, which is really good. Now, because they are the same, this means that those two objects have identical shapes, right? So I can just take a mix RGB and I can subtract, subtract, however this is pronounced, those two attributes, like that. I'm gonna switch this to subtract and turn the factor all the way down. And this gets black, and this is really good. Now, usually black means like something is not working, but in this case, it means things are working because this means the shape between those, those two objects is exactly the same thing. Watch what happens if I go to edit mode and I rotate this. We have those little, things happening here, right? Currently blue seems to be stretching, right? So I am instead, uh, you know, the subtraction is happening in the wrong order actually. Uh, or is it important? Let me try. Yeah, now this is right. So you have to uh, subtract from the new state attribute, the base state attribute, like that. I'm gonna show you the nodes once more 
uh, in this shape here. If you go to the edit mode, you see things are working. You have stretching as red, uh, black as nothing has changed, and blue as contracting. And in the blue areas, we should have wrinkles. So how on earth do we get this blue area out of here? Well, for that we have a really nice node called separate XYZ. So we use or RGB, it can be RGB. And uh, what happens if you connect the blue channel here? Well, then we get only the blue areas, right? And if you connect the red channel here, then we only have the stretch areas like that. We are going to use the blue channel as something to control this uh, wrinkle appearance, basically. So, um, as you see, if I multiply the factor here with zero, I don't have any wrinkles. If I multiply with, for example, 100, I get a lot of wrinkles. So I'm just going to use the blue channel as the multiplication here. Now, if I rotate this, you see we have those, right? But we also have them in some other areas, and this doesn't look very nice. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use a color ramp. Um, I'm going to show you how this looks. I'm just going to up the black here a little bit to create some more contrast. And now this should work. Yeah, it works, as you see. We have wrinkles only in the areas where this thing is contracting, which looks pretty nice. And this is how you create wrinkles. If you felt something remained unclear for you, come to Patreon. There is everything you need to accomplish this project. So see you on Patreon and have a nice day.